He's not anywhere near the defensive player that he was in college. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to another episode of NBA Now. It's your boy Dom, and we're going to get right into things here today. So, today, 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 we are talking about the New Orleans Pelicans. We are talking about Zion Williamson. We're talking about the whole thing. Um, Zion still hasn't played for the Pelicans, and I guess they want him to return this year. It's a really weird situation. Um, when you look at this guy, he's um was one of the most hyped up prospects ever coming out of college um even in high school i mean you had drake at his games you had everything this guy had the media coverage of the nba before he was even 17 years old right um a freak of nature athletically comes into the league um as the number one overall pick when it gives you know the pelicans the opportunity to rebuild and get rid of anthony davis and smooth transition to their next superstar and is injured and doesn't start his rookie season until late comes into his rookie season and has a phenomenal first game um and he ends up having a pretty good rookie season um pushing himself into the rookie of the year conversations but through many level-headed people's heads um he doesn't end up winning it because he didn't really play enough games 24 games out of an 84 or 82 game season most people agreed just wasn't enough to win you rookie of the year even though he averaged over 20 points per game on almost 60 percent from the field and 42 percent from three although taking less than a three per game um and then last year he built on that so he came out and he played 61 of the 72 games so most of the games that season and he averaged 27 points he was named an all-star he shot over 60 percent from the field um his three-point percentage dipped mightily but he was still shooting the same amount of attempts. It just was 0.2 out of 0.6 instead of 0.3 out of 0.6. So really not much going there. Um, his defense showed some improvement. Not quite anywhere near his level of defense um, that he had in college. Where he looked like he would come into the league and damn near win defensive player of the year initially. I mean the blocks, the steals, the fast breaks that he created, everything. Um, he was... A man amongst boys truly in college and i think we saw that um change when he got to the league he his defense dropped off his defense um really wasn't very good you know he was um not good on defense i, I don't know any other way to put it he just wasn't wasn't good on defense um statistically it was a little bit better in his sophomore season makes an all-star team and everything like that and then um goes down with an injury in i believe the off season was when he got injured and the injury has just continued it was a foot injury and then it came out that he had gained massive amounts of weight which makes total sense lower body injury you're not getting as much cardio you're not um you might not be eating as well because your foot is broken and a little bit of self-pity i think anybody if your foot's broken you're a bit annoyed at life um because i know i've broken my leg i've broken my arm it's no fun um so whatever is going on with his foot and his knees or whatever, uh, he ends up getting a lot of weight. That becomes the main storyline coming into this season. Um, it becomes, a, is he going to be the first guy to request out of um, or not sign the uh, Supermax? And then he comes out and it his weight is massively above. And then that becomes the main storyline. And so it's these constant storylines that have revolved him this year. And he still hasn't played. And his weight still isn't under control. He's continued to see setbacks with his injury. And it's scary because it's a guy that coming into the league, the big question for him was, what about the injuries? What if the injuries are just too much to handle for him or pile up too quickly and it derails his career? We've seen phenomenal talents um, in the past fall to these injuries. I mean, you look at a guy like Greg Oden. He was drafted above Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is one of the 15 best basketball players to ever play. And I don't care how bad or good you think of him. That's an unarguable statement, in my opinion. Um, one of, if not the most gifted scorer to ever touch a basketball. And Greg Oden was drafted above him. But because of lower body injuries, Greg Oden's career was quickly derailed. And even though um, the Portland team with him and his other stars alongside him was very, very successful when they all played together, um, they didn't win. 
and that was because of the injuries and the injuries to also another one of his teammates in Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy, super young all-star when he was in the league. He was like a three-time all-star by like 26 or something like that and like before he even got in his prime but he ran out of cartilage in his knees due to knee surgeries and his career swiftly off the edge. Um, DeMarcus Cousins even, a guy that just, you know, got another opportunity back in the league with the Milwaukee Bucks, but when he was with the Kings, he was the consensus best center in the league for a few years. Uh, when he goes to the Pelicans, him and Anthony Davis looked like a super formidable duo. Almost no one, like there was no way to match up against that type of interior presence, and it was completely contradictory to modern basketball, but he goes down with an injury mid-season, and um, Anthony Davis wears his number at the All-Star game and everything. And then due to contract stuff like that, he ends up going to the Golden State Warriors. Um, isn't the same after he comes back from injury. Bounces around to like the Houston Rockets and stuff like that. And just his career has never been the same. Um, Isaiah Thomas, a guy that was a top MVP candidate. He was a guy that he goes down with a hip injury, plays through it, and it significantly impacts his career where he was traded for Kyrie Irving and then it looked like um, the Cavaliers lost that trade by a landslide due to how Isaiah Thomas played and stuff like that. And ever since, he just hasn't been the same. Now, he's, again, he's gotten some opportunities with the Nuggets, with the Lakers um, to kind of try and bring back his career. But due to the defensive struggles and then the injury, it completely wiped away what he, his value was. And he was a top five MVP candidate. Um, with the Boston Celtics, which is insane to think about short Kings. Um, but yeah, I mean, low, lower body injuries are super, super important to take your time with. So it, it makes sense why um, the Pelicans keep, you know, if there's any sort of setback, they keep pushing the state back. But what is wild to me is the fact that they want him to play this year. Because yes, there's a potential opening at the bottom of the Western Conference. I mean, the West this year is very, very close together um other than the, the top few teams um you're looking at a sub 500 record from the sixth seed where the lakers are all the way down to the 15th seed there are five teams in the west with a 500 or above record um comparable to the east where that is nine teams so a little bit different this year not something i think anybody expected um but with san antonio being the 10th seed at 13 and 18 and new orleans only being at 12 and 21 to be at the 12 seed they i can see where they're like okay we have potential to make the playoffs or whatever but truly this team just needs to sit um zion for the rest of the year figure out what they're going to do with brendan ingram whether they keep him where they trade him or shoot do what okc does with shay or did at least last year with shay gilgis alexander right have if he has a minor injury blow it out of proportion and get a better pick so you can just improve your roster um because even if Zion comes back and is what he was last year, which we don't know due to the injuries and stuff like that, um, this team might still not be good enough to make the playoffs just due to some of the roster construction. And I think the th reason that this video is labeled Zion's a bust or whatever, that's the thumbnail at least, um, is because he's not what we were promised. Um, and I'm a big Zion fan. I have a jersey. I'm thinking about, um, I have a, New Orleans Pelican Zion jersey. I'm thinking about going and buying a Duke Zion jersey. I loved watching him at Duke. I'm a Duke guy. Like, I'm Zion all the way. Thought he should have been closing games over RJ Barrett. Thought Cam Reddy should have been closing games over RJ Barrett, in my opinion. Um, that's another story for another day. But I was huge Zion guy. Clearly, um, coming into the league, I was like number one pick. Pelicans, you know, have a shot to win a championship here in a few years because this guy's just an outstanding talent. I thought he was just going to blow the league away and there's still opportunity for that you know there's no no reason that he doesn't come back from these injuries and show that he's better than ever before i mean when you look at guys that and maybe not due to injuries and stuff like that like he's shown that he's a very 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 talented player zion already um but you look at like trey young a guy that was labeled a bust for the first half of his rookie season and then flipped a switch and turned it around and almost won rookie of the year um so there's potential that he comes back from these injuries and he's just able to flip a switch on the defensive end and really turn this thing around for him but he's not anywhere near the defensive player that he was in college and that i think is the biggest negative um his injuries have popped up which was the biggest scare 
um, coming into the league. And though he's been a dominant force, he hasn't led to winning, which I think is something a lot of people thought was going to happen. So then I think, and a lot of that is due to roster construction. I blame the Pelican staff as much as I blame his injuries, which you can't blame his injuries on him because that's just what you knew that drafting him as the Pelicans. We all knew that coming into the league that there was potential for it. Um, but there's no reason that even when he was healthy last year, that this team wasn't able to make the playoffs. Um, I think, you know, when you go back to the bubble, right, this was a team that, um, there was the conspiracies or whatever, that the reason that, um, they had so many teams playing the seven games was to try and push Zion in to the playoffs to match up with LeBron in the first round for TV rating purposes. Um, no, I don't really agree with that. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I think they just kind of set a threshold or whatever for wins. Maybe they did. I wouldn't be shocked if they did. Um, it would help the NBA and it wouldn't necessarily hurt them or anything like that. Um, but he hasn't, he hasn't lived up to the MVP caliber talent so far. He hasn't been able to stay on the court enough. He hasn't been the defensive player, like I said, and he hasn't led to winning. So just all these things that it felt like the media and a lot of this, I blame on the media, um, but the media promised us was Zion. Um, it hasn't come to fruition. Doesn't look like it might come to fruition and um, has kind of left a scare. I think in a lot of NBA fans and especially in Pelicans fans. Now, if this team is able to get things together, I think we'll all be praising Zion. I know I'll be the first one. Um, to be praising Zion and rooting for Zion for that matter. Um, cause like I said, I'm a Zion fan. I love his game. He's just an electric player to watch. There's just some guys, um, that when you just see them play the way that they just, I don't know, the way they just find a way to just be better than some other guys, um, which is just the type of guy Zion is, is just phenomenal. And, um, I really hope that his injuries don't become a long-term issue, but he seems to have issue with the organization in New Orleans. He has shown injury issue. He's shown weight issue. And it, it doesn't look like there's a good spot for the Pelicans. Now, um, some slightly unrealistic stuff we're going to be talking about here um, in this minute, but some stuff I kind of want to bring to attention. If he doesn't, I think there's no chance that he doesn't sign his max rookie extension now um, because of his injuries and everything like that. But is there a way that he still forces out of New Orleans if he does sign that, right? Um, we see what's going on with Ben Simmons and how that's not working out for him. Is Zion a big enough name for that to potentially happen then? Um, should the Pelicans explore trading him now before his stock drops lower if his injury things become a real big issue where right now he's a, coming off an all-star appearance, has an injury and whatnot, but you could still get the whole buffet for Zion at this point in time due to his potential due to what he's shown regardless of his injuries I think so should the Pelicans explore that maybe that's the way um their management should take it to truly get this team together and stuff like that um I don't know I don't know what the best route is I think nobody will until we at least see him come back um but one thing I would just and I know this isn't gonna affect them but if you're New Orleans do not play him this year. Your number one priority needs to be Zion's value. And I say value very specifically because whether it's trade or whatever it is, or it's side and trade, or he does end up wanting out and he doesn't play or whatever, he still has a lot of value right now. But if he plays and he plays bad and he gets injured again, his value tanks. Um, and also if he, you wait and you guarantee that he's healed, um, at least from this injury. Now, there's always another injury that could pop up, um, unrelated, related, whatever, even if he's fully healed. Um, your number one priority is if he's fully healed, that percentage chance is so much lower that something's going to reoccur because you didn't rush it. Um, rushing injuries goes nowhere. I mean, we saw that with the Clay Thompson thing. The reason Clay Thompson hasn't played in the NBA in like 900 days or whatever is because... He had a big time injury, tried to rush it back because the team wanted to contend and the team was doing really bad, and he got re-injured um, with a similar injury, or it might have been the exact same injury, I can't even remember. I think it was an ACL and then a meniscus, but or the other way around, but it could have been an ACL and then an ACL again. Um, regardless, rushing it 
will not help your team. And Zion's game is not a game like Klay Thompson where we all look at Klay Thompson and perceive the fact that if he comes back at 50%, he's still an all-star caliber player. He's still better than CJ McCollum. Um, no hate to CJ, just that was my best example off the top of my head. Regardless, though, Zion's game, if he comes back from an injury and is 50%, he's out of the league. Um, upon his rookie deal, maybe one more contract that isn't super substantial. Like, it would completely crash his career like DeMarcus Cousins' um, injury did to him. It's just the way he plays. It's the lack of three-point ability. It's the lack of um, extreme hustle. And it's the fact that he relies so much on athleticism athleticism um now i hope the best for zion i hope the best for new orleans honestly because this terrible franchise does not need to be doing this to their fans and um i don't really have the authority to give this permission but if you're a pelicans fan and you want to jump ship um feel free nobody's gonna nobody's gonna get mad at you um i mean the team has had this is the third team that new orleans has had they had the jazz they got moved they had the um hornets they got moved and then they or sorry they had the hornets that turned into the pelicans um regard you get my point um at the end of the day if you live in new orleans or whatever and you don't want to be a pelicans fan and you don't want to suffer anymore us nuggets fans are here we're accepting all right it's, we're not going to call it bandwagoning because we're injured right now so right now it's your opportunity to become a nuggets fan and join in with us we just we wait for Jokic to you know win another MVP and everybody come back and everything like that. So if you want to join an MVP team, I give you permission for right now. This offer stands for 48 hours after this video is published. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, that's gonna be it from me. Let me know what you guys think on the whole Zion situation. I really wanted to make a video on it because, like I said, one of my favorite players. Um, I have made some other videos on Zion and Brandon Ingram, so make sure you guys go check that out. It's been your boy Dom, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace out, guys.